Good morning, guys. It's the next day, and it's time for cardio. So uh, I woke up. I weighed 200 grams less than yesterday. So let me show you actually on my fitness pal, where I put in all my weights of every single day, what the progress has been like since I've been here. So these are all the weights that I put in my fitness pal. You can pretty much see ever since November 22nd, that the weight has been pretty steady. Sometimes it goes down quite quickly, but then I have a high day to put it back up. So on December 1st, you can see that it was quite low for sure. And then I had to you know, get it higher by having a high day. But that was caused by the flight because I had low carbs throughout the entire day and you know a lot of effort getting to Aruba. But since we've been here, it's been nice and steady, around 113, about one kilo above my weight limit. So as you can see, it's a nice steady up and down, around 113 when I'm here, which is great. And my shape's improving every single day, which is awesome as well. Today is going to be an arm day, so the carbs today will be a tad lower. And then we'll see again tomorrow what the shape will be like. But for now, I'm gonna take about 5,000 steps and then have the breakfast. And the breakfast will be the most different thing basically from uh, the rest of the day because it has carbs in there. Yesterday it had 80 grams of cream of rice, today probably will be 50 grams. So it really depends on the day, on the shape, on the weight and the uh, uh, workout you're going to do, the muscle group you're going to train, um, how many carbs you take in. So uh, for those of you who do not know, I, have my, I am my own coach, which, you know, through experience is beneficial because now I, I know exactly what to do with my body in order to get a specific response. So uh, I'm definitely uh, very happy with the progress and, uh, you know, progressing here in Aruba is not a bad thing at all anyway guys see you at the breakfast all right so this is the breakfast of the day instead of cream of rice i actually chose for oats because i also have oats so i try to um go between oats and cream of rice it's the same amount of calories oats have a little less carbs a little more fats but the same thing applies here as all the other breakfasts 100 grams of blueberries 15 grams of 100 percent dark chocolate about 50 grams of whey isolate and I added two egg whites in here to uh, make it a little bit thicker so I'm gonna enjoy this and also of course have the kiwi on hand which is always very delicious healthy and good for the immune system and protein digestion let's enjoy Okay, we arrived at Hardcore Fitness and we're going to do some arms once again. When I start the triceps, we start off with the rope extension to warm up the joints, the tendons and the tricep itself. So, let's do it. So, the first exercise is the rope tricep pushdown. And I just recommend that everybody, whenever you're training triceps, you start out with a true, simple isolation movement for the tricep like this that is easy on the joints, easy on the tendons because I've learned the hard way. When I was younger, so a couple of years ago and pretty much since the beginning, since I started working out, I have, you know, neglected warming up properly. And uh, of course, I still kept to, into account that I didn't want to feel any pain. But when you're very young, you don't feel pain anyway. And that is exactly the problem. So when you're getting older, once you've done all the heavy skull crushers, close grip bench presses, because at the beginning of the workout, you're the strongest. So you start out with those. That's when you start to notice that your elbows and your tendons have gotten quite a beating throughout the time. And it could have been prevented by doing a movement like this first pretty much pre-exhausting the triceps, but more importantly, getting blood into the tendon and joint area, which is very hard to reach using those very you know, heavy movements, which puts a lot of stress on those joints and tendons before the blood is rushed in there. So, you know, if I had to give you an advice, even if you don't feel any pain at all, even if you're very young, make it a habit of starting out with the ro tricep rope push down or another cable movement that really isolates those triceps and do quite a lot of volume with it um, before doing the super heavy tricep work and it saves you a lot of shoulder and um, elbow tendonitis and pain and injuries stuff like that 
So, the rope tries to push down. This is pretty much the final set. And it's uh, the working set. So, I go all the way up, stretch the tricep, then push all the way down. And the moment I can't push all the way down anymore, that's when the set stops. However, that's where a lot of people think the set begins because they don't use full range of motion at all. So never continue a rope tricep pushdown if you can't go all the way down anymore if you don't know what you're doing. So now we're still doing kind of a warm-up movement, but this one will already be quite heavy and difficult. So I'm wearing the elbow sleeve to protect my elbow as I'm doing this movement and it's my left elbow that has been bothering me for a while. Not as much anymore, but I still want to prevent it from coming back, which is why I'm wearing it. So this is the overhead tricep extension, overhead cable extension, whatever we want to call it, with both arms. And the trick here is to really focus on the stretch. You don't have to focus on the contraction here as much because the tension will simply be on your elbows. Because if you look, when I go all the way up, I can simply keep my arms straight and the tension is all on my joints and not on my tricep. What you want in bodybuilding is the tension to be constantly on the muscle. You have to challenge the muscle as much as you can. So I go all the way down, feel the maximum stretch, then go up to about 90%. And before I start to feel the tension disappear, I go back down. That increases time under tension, decreases the use of momentum, and really also increases the mind-muscle connection in the triceps and really focus on the muscle and not hurting the joints or the tendons, which is not what we are training. After those two movements, we are starting to do some heavier tricep work, some more demanding tricep work. Normally, I like to do a tricep dips like this. In, for example, the ATX belt squat machine, where you can also use a belt around your waist to do these dips. But I do have to say, using a machine makes it a bit more easy for your upper body to stay balanced, to stay stable, and you can really focus on the triceps here. So what you want to do is tuck your elbows to the side to really uh, take the shoulder and the chest out of the movement as much as you can and really feel that the tricep is the limiting factor. So another big benefit of starting out with the rope tricep pushdown and the other one I just did is that the tricep will fill first. So even if your delts and chest are working here, they will still be far stronger than the tricep is because the tricep is already taxed by the other two movements. So what I'm also doing here is first go to failure on the heavy set, which is what I like to do. And before that, doing some warm ups to make sure I get used to the movement, to make sure I don't feel any nagging pain anywhere. And then do, as I just mentioned, the heaviest set to failure. And then do a lighter set also to failure, which makes it the second working set. So if you don't really felt it in the triceps as much with the heavy load, because that is more difficult to do, then the second working set really allows you to get into the triceps, which is what bodybuilding is all about. So go down until you feel the stretch, then go up and contract and repeat until you hit failure. Then the close grip bench press. You might think, well, after having done three exercises already, why are you still warming up on this movement? Well, it's simply because it's another heavy compound movement where you always should warm up. Now, the warm up is not only to get blood into the muscle, but also get used to the movement. For example, if I would start out with the working set here, uh, the bar path and the way my hands are positioned, the way my elbows are positioned, I couldn't have gotten used to that to really get into the perfect position to target the triceps if I didn't do a few sets before. So I did about two to three warm-up sets before starting out the working set after this. And of course, you have to check your shape every now and then in this gym because back in the Netherlands, it was quite cold and you couldn't really wear a tank top until the very end of the session. And then a lot of your pump would have already been gone because you already hit a different muscle group at the beginning of the workout. So here, it's always nice, nice to check out your progress uh, throughout the entire workout to see what you look like with the pump here and there because that's exactly what you're doing backstage 
pumping up your muscles to look better, to give off the illusion that you always look like that, even though it's only for half an hour. But anyway, this is the working set and uh, I'm going as heavy as possible here, but not going below 8 reps. I don't like to do this because it puts a lot of you know, unnecessary strain on the tendons and, uh, and uh, joints, but also on the chest. You can't isolate the triceps here, it's a compound movement, so the chest is also working. And if you go way too heavy, the chest will do the blunt of the work anyway. So what we're doing right here is we're doing a drop set. So that's the intensifying technique on the triceps here. So first working set was simply going heavy as I can until failure. Of course, you then need a spotter. And then we're doing a drop set, only removing half a plate on each side because of the fact we were still able to do quite some reps on the first set. And this tells you that you can do again a couple of reps on the second set. If you go way too heavy and then only remove half a plate, there is no way that you can do more than five reps on the second uh, set, which is a drop set. So that's not what you want to do. And then it's time for the biceps. So first we did the triceps because the triceps are a weaker point compared to the biceps. The biceps will always be a good body part of mine, even when I don't train it that often. So the total volume of the triceps is, has always been more to me compared to the biceps, also more challenging movements. Because with biceps, you can only do a certain amount of things. You can basically curl upwards, you can, you can uh, twist your wrists, to hit the brachialis or the outer peak or the inner bicep head. But that's pretty much it. With the triceps you can go a push down, an overhead movement, a press, a different grip widths, a dip, a lot of different stuff with a lot more weight. So that's why I like to use a bit more volume on those tricep movements, a bit more uh, sets here and there to be able to really tax those. And because the biceps are already a strong point, I like to hit the true basic with those as well. So this is the alternating dumbbell curl. And here, because it's the first movement for the biceps, I still like to warm up quite a lot. Even though my body feels warm, I feel hot, I feel a lot of blood in my arm, I still want those biceps to be warmed up because the bicep tendon, the distal bicep tendon, which is the tendon that is attached from the forearm to the bicep is very sensitive to not being warmed up. And I know this because when I train the back and I don't warm up properly and I go too heavy, the tension might accidentally shift to the biceps and then the distal bicep tendon gets inflamed and I actually had a minor injury in the left side uh, you know, for a long time a few years ago. And trust me, that's not what you want because then every single bicep movement and every back movement as well is impaired. That's not what you want as a bodybuilder because you want to do every single exercise without feeling pain. After the alternating dumbbell curl, we're doing the E EZ bar curl or easy curl bar. So this one is pretty cool as well. So some gyms have pre-weighted barbells like this. It takes a lot of less effort to then use those barbells because normally you have a barbell and you have to put the weights on yourself. Normally you don't even think about this, but when you're in prep, you want to do as least effort as possible in between sets just to be able to do the set itself, which is this movement right here. So the grip is about shoulder width, just a regular grip. And I go to failure here pretty quickly. I think I only did one warm up set here, maybe two. I'm by the way not including every single warm up here because that would be boring to watch. I will be including and I am including all the working sets because that's what matters. Those are what counts. So this one is the preacher as bar curl, easy bar curl. And it's a different version from the regular preacher curl because the angle is straight down. It makes it a lot more difficult compared to a regular preacher curl because the regular preacher curl is uh, an angle. If you go all the way up, the tension could still disappear. But when you're hanging down like this, straight down, the tension is maximized when you're going all the way up, which is what makes this a great movement for sure. I used to do this movement as well at Pure Fitness. A few years ago, I actually started my channel 
Uh, so my very first video on this channel is in that gym. And in 2016, I have put a lot of videos up training the biceps using this exact movement, which built up a lot of my bicep peak uh, with, I mean, size. And uh, so it's a great way to really feel those biceps. And by the way, this is just a close grip. And the closer the grip is, the more to the outside of the bicep you target, and the bigger the bicep peak will be. And because arms on their own aren't enough, we are adding some uh, shoulder movements. So the side and rear delts will be trained. No front delts, because in my opinion, they are developed enough already. And I don't want to add any unnecessary fatigue to my body, to a body part that doesn't need extra developing when you're already working it, when you're training the chest. And uh, that's not what I want to waste. So the side delts, however, and the rear delts can never be big enough. So you can see here, I'm using the machine version. Normally I would do a side dumbbell lateral raise, but I don't have this machine at my disposal at the gym at 100% fit gym where I normally train, which is fine. But when you do, it's always nice to try it out. And because I know I've done this movement quite a lot in different gyms and I know it feels really great. I know I can isolate the side delts here. And the benefit of being lean is that you can see the striations in the delts telling you that the tension is constant. So if my delts would suddenly change shape, if they would stop showing striations, if they would stop showing contractions, that's when you know the tension is lost and that would be a bad way of performing this movement. So the volume is always going to be high on high, on, I mean on side delt movements. So always 15 to 20 reps to make sure that a lot of blood is rushed into that muscle without the traps doing the work. Because the heavier you go, the more the traps will be inclined to help the side delts lift the weight. And it's very difficult to isolate those traps from the movement then because the weight is so heavy. So if you're a beginner and you want bigger side delts, you should stick to lighter weights and higher volume, at least 15 to 20 reps. Now this was my first working set and the second one will be interesting because that's the exact opposite of what I just told you guys. This is a heavy set that I'm doing and actually William Bonek told me that I could implement this movement to improve my side delts even more because I always do the very high volume stuff for the side delts but never the heavy stuff. So on a machine like this, you simply use half range of motion so you still skip the traps doing the work at at the top but if you do the bottom range of motion the side delts are still doing all of the work but then with a heavier load allowing for progressive overload and the fibers to be put under more mechanical tension for muscle growth a very smart idea indeed if you know what you're doing now this movement is amazing as well a wide grip um, upright row the wide grip ensures that you target the side delts and not the front delts or the traps. You really want to do this after the side lateral raise because then you have a good mind muscle connection and the first muscle that will fail is the side delts and that's always what you want to try to do. Now this is also an awesome movement. Uh, whenever I'm in a gym and I want to train the rear delts except for doing the standard rear delt flies or reverse dumbbell flies for example I always look for a machine that I can use that is normally a, a regular back row for example so this one would normally be for the lower back or for the lats just the back thickness in general but I just sit on the seat as low as possible so the handles are as high compared uh, to my body as possible and that allows me to isolate those rear delts as you can see right here Obviously, some of the traps will be aiding in uh, lifting this weight, but that's because the shoulder blades are moving back and forth and the traps are attached to the shoulder blades. And um, if you see that happening, it looks like the traps are doing a lot of the work. But if you look really closely, at least I could feel it very well. I am truly targeting those rear delts and the thing that goes to failure is the rear delts. You can see they them popping out of the back and the only way to get good round big rear delts is to isolate them like this, put a lot of blood in them. The weight shouldn't be too heavy, but the volume should be quite high. 
pretty much the same principles as the side lateral raises so the side delts and the rear delts to me should be trained in the same way and a lot of people skip the rear delts um, you know they just do some rear delt fly and that's it but they forget how important the rear delts are to balance out the musculature in the shoulders to prevent front delt injuries because the front delts are always very developed and strong compared to the rear delt so don't neglect the rear delts and this is the third i mean the third set on this working set so the second drop set to really push a lot of blood into that small area to make sure that small area is as big as possible so that was the arm and shoulder workout got quite a nice pump felt really great and it's just an awesome gym to work out your shoulders and arms at and by the way all the clothing that i'm wearing throughout all the videos are all available on vintagegenetics.com this one by the way is the dropped armhole white tank top and the shorts are the blue bermuda shorts available on the website Okay, back home now, train the shoulders uh, and the arms as you saw. And now it's time for the post workout meal. And let me show you what it entails exactly. As you can see right there, this is the rice that I'm always taking post workout. But instead of 80 grams yesterday, this time it's going to be 50 grams post workout, just like the 50 grams in the morning. Uh, that changed from 80 grams. This is the same change because it's an arm day and uh, a smaller muscle group to train. And uh, yeah, I want to stay in uber conditioning for sure. And if I have to load at the end, I can always do that. The yellow color is caused by the turmeric. A lot of people ask me, this is just turmeric powder. Add that into your rice and it will look very delicious. And I also added some parsley, some parsley leaves for flavor. And they actually also detoxify any fish you put in the meal. And we're also going to cut up some pumpkin obviously not all this is about 550 grams so we're going to cut up about half to put this in the meal and we also have again the codfish this is already cooked just have to warm it up a little bit and add it on top of the meal and we're also going to be adding enough pink himalayan salt to replenish all the sodium and other minerals we just sweat out because you can see in the video i was sweating and it's not just water you're losing but also minerals electrolytes which are in here so let me show you the end result Alrighty, the end result is right here we have some turmeric rice we again have some 250 grams of white fish and some pumpkin and I actually steam the pumpkin in the microwave for about six minutes makes it absolutely perfect and right there is that nice kiwi which always goes with my breakfast and my post workout meal also going to be drinking about a liter of water around this meal 15 minutes after this i won't drink in you know, the 15 minutes to come after this meal but after that i will drink a liter to allow this to digest first and then hydrate myself after the workout anyway time to enjoy this as i'm working once again on getting the videos ready for you guys thank you very much for the incredible support guys i really really appreciate you watching the videos and much more to come okay the next meal is a carbless meal it's a salad with once again the two cans of tuna we have some spinach we have some bell pepper some cucumber a little bit of onion and uh, that's pretty much it and i also added 15 grams of almond butter as the fat source last time i added half an avocado so uh, i like to add a fat source in the meal after the post-workout meal to provide a little bit of extra energy for recovery once more the meal after this won't have a fat source and the last last two meals of the day do because then you're getting close to bed to recover at night but no carbs will be added this actually doesn't look that bad to me when you're used to a lot of other prep meals so um this is gonna taste good let's enjoy this one okay time for a grocery haul we are here at the supermarket looking at the cans of tuna because i need them for the meal we just saw i need to make a lot more of them and we're uh, almost out of tuna so you might as well get them and the reason is to get it a little cheaper than the actual fresh fish here because this pretty much divided by two and that's actually the price in dollars just about so we're gonna get the uh, cans of tuna from here the cheapest possible one for example this one 
it's like 70 80 cents so just gonna get this and by 30 grams 25 to 30 grams of protein per can so we're gonna get a lot of those and then uh, use the fresh fish I have for all the other meals but uh, eggs tuna some vegetables we're gonna get all of that here Okay, so we got a lot of groceries. I'll show you that in a minute. Well, not a lot, but a lot of the same stuff like tuna and eggs, which I need, and I'll explain exactly why, which I kind of did already, but whatever. We are doing some cardio right now to kill two birds in one stone, and apologies for it being dark. Anyway, I'm gonna walk about 3,000 steps. That's the amount of steps that was still left. And then uh, we'll go home and eat the next meal. Let's do this. Okay, we are back home. As you can see, I'm already making my uh, fourth meal of the day. And we also have, again, is a lot of the tuna. So we have like 20 extra cans of this. So to make sure we get through our time here in Aruba with plenty of protein, there's just some um, celery in there, zucchini, and a little bit of uh, onion and bell pepper just tiny bits for the flavor added some salt added some garlic powder added some parsley and some black pepper and of course some himalayan pink salt and uh, we also got some groceries of course so here you can see we got some eggs so we had these eggs before like eight more of these but they're going uh, quite quick because i use the egg whites as well so I used two whole eggs and probably eight to ten egg whites in the last meal of the day and since I don't have liquid egg whites here I need to use the eggs themselves so I'm gonna take the egg whites out of these these are slightly less qualitative I think compared to this one I'm gonna check the uh, egg yolk color but the deeper the yellow color is of the egg yolk the better um, you know fat source there will be in there and more vitamins will be in there and this is the fridge. I got some extra celery. I like that because it expels extra water. Obviously I'm drinking a whole lot and I don't want to be dehydrated, but having this in my diet, getting used to it in the last few, you know, two weeks before the Olympia is a great thing. Asparagus does the same. A bit more expensive though, so I'm going to stick to this mostly. Here's some cucumber. Um, this is the mixture I just put in, as you can see. We have some spinach, some pumpkin, which I really love. And here you can see all the fish that I still have with me. But you can also see that's not gonna cut it for the entire time I'll be here. The salmon will, but the white fish won't because I simply wasn't able to take it with me. So yeah, that's what we have. And uh, in the freezer, there's also some frozen blueberries right there. And also some uh, cauliflower, some broccoli, stuff like this are so truly the basics. Okay, so this is the meal number four of the day. And what do I think of it? Well, it doesn't look the most appealing because of the tuna. I actually baked that with the vegetables. But the flavor will be there because of the spices, the salt, the pepper. Trust me, guys, don't neglect those. And there's a tiny bit of ketchup on here as well to add some extra aroma. Anyway, let's enjoy this. There's no fat source, just protein and vegetables. Okay, the next meal will be a salmon and vegetable meal. Very simple. So we have some Brussels sprouts here, one celery stock, and this is actually the steamer that I'm using. So what I'm doing here is I'm adding the lid, just like this. Putting it in the microwave. Oops, putting it in the microwave, like this, and just make it go for about five and a half minutes. And what we also have is here the salmon, as in previous videos, it's already prepared, you can see. So this is very soft and vulnerable, but it's very delicious. It's been cooked already, so all I have to do is warm it up, bake it in the pan a little bit, add some salt, the only thing I'm missing is some dill, but hey, that's luxury, and then uh, show you the end result. Alrighty, 
So this is the end result. As you can see, it actually looks pretty good. It's one of my favorite meals of the day, apart from the breakfast and the post-workout meal because those actually have carbs, which is always nice. When you can't have something, you want it more. But these vegetables are pretty delicious as well. Celery, I like to steam it, makes it nice and soft. The Brussels sprouts too, steaming actually makes it contain more of the vitamins and tastes really awesome. Uh, added some uh, pepper and salt to it, by the way. Here you have the salmon, 250 grams, and added or oregano and some pepper and salt as well. And a tiny bit of the ketchup once more, adding six whole calories to this meal. And I also just recorded a Q&A, so uh, perhaps it's on the channel right now already. And if it is, make sure to ask your questions on that video in the comments to make sure to try and get that um, included in the next Q&A because I'll be recording more of them while I'm here. Anyway, let's enjoy this meal. Okay guys, this is the last meal of the day. Two whole eggs and about 10 to 12 egg whites, I don't remember, but it's uh, two whole eggs and 350 mils of egg whites. Just adding a little bit of salt and that's it. So no vegetables, nothing else, just a healthy fat and protein source. So guys, thank you for watching this video. Those were all the meals of the day. Um, arm workout, a deltoid workout, and tomorrow is another day which will be recorded. Thank you for watching and don't forget to stay good.